Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at Casper versus Solana. We're going to be covering all the main metrics that we normally cover, and we're going to go through and head-to-head -head look at Casper versus Solana, see how they match up against each other, and then we'll give our opinions at the end. So let's just start off at the top here with transactions per second. So Casper currently running at 400 transactions per second, and then obviously we all know Rust is coming in this is an update in the coding language from Golang to Rust, and it's going to take it up to around 2,500 transactions per second with tested potential to scale further. If we click in here, we can see this right now. So the max blocks per second and transactions per second is a goal of 32 blocks per second, and then even a possibility of 100 blocks per second within a reasonable target. With a current block size, this would translate to 6,400 transactions per second at the low end, so at the 32, and then 20,000 transactions per second at the 100 end, so 100 blocks per second gives us 20,000 transactions per second. Now they have made a couple of updates on Twitter and of course in the Discord and stuff like that, where this is pretty much old news by now, but they've made some changes in terms of that. They're trying to up the blocks per second, so they're starting on 10 for the test net and I think they're going to release on main net with 10 and then slowly increase the blocks per second from there onwards. So Casper is looking at around 20,000 at the high end when this rust rewrite comes in if it goes well. However on the other side Solana is currently operating at around 3,000 transactions per second so definitely doing more than Casper right now however Casper when it moves over to rust will probably be in the same level playing field on that 10 blocks per second and then hopefully once we get more blocks per second on the network that can be upped as well further. So if we scroll down here we can see transactions per second. It is saying 2655 however on the 6 hour chart we're seeing you know around 3000 it drops down below that and then it comes above it. So we're looking at that on average however the reason that I'm not using this max figure of transactions per second is because you know there was claims that it could do 65,000 transactions per second but that was only claimed and we haven't really seen that put into purpose yet. With the Solana network it's currently operating on these type of transactions per second and obviously we'll get into later the network going down that is one of the main problems with Solana right now is could possibly be due to transactions per second being too high that the network can't handle it but there is also a lot of other things going on in the background. So this is why we're using this figure. 65,000 is what it's rumored to go up to, but I highly doubt that it would be a stable network at that point unless they make some major improvements to the network. So right now, Casper is currently 400 transactions, so Solana is beating it on the transactions per second, but hopefully Casper should level the playing field going forward after the Rust rewrite. Now, when it comes to transaction times, Casper has a one second block time. So we're on the graph inspector here, this is in real time, so you can see that there's one block added every second. It might be three within a second like we see here, but then it averages back out. So it's already pretty quick block times in terms of block time across the whole of cryptocurrency. You know, with Bitcoin it's 10 minutes, with Ethereum's 13-ish seconds. So even with Casper being one block per second, and it's achieved through proof of work and not proof of stake, it's still a pretty good block time that facilitates transactions pretty quickly. However, on the other side, Solana actually has a 400 millisecond transaction time. So if we scroll down here, it's just on the website. Don't keep your users waiting. Solana has a block time of 400 milliseconds. And as the hardware gets faster, so will the network. So Casper isn't trying to improve the block times just because one second is fine right now. There's no real need for, you know, these quicker, quicker transactions that are going under one second. Unless something is really time dependent, you know, you're already operating quicker than a lot of banks by going under one second. So Solana already has 400 milliseconds. I believe it can range up to 800 milliseconds within that range of 400 to 800. So inherently it is quicker than Casper coin on that side as well. So to reiterate, one second block time for Casper, 400 millisecond block time for Solana. I believe that over time talking in the future, Solana's block times will actually get quicker with technology improvements. However, I believe that Casper, they're just keeping it at one second block times. 
Now, when we're moving into fees, so at current time, the Casper fee right here is a calculation of, you know, the amount to send a transaction times by the dollar amount. Same with the Solana one here. If we click into these here, we can see we just pulled this one from the Solana Explorer. It's 0 0.0021 cents. And, you know, they're relatively cheap when you're looking at that. However, this is only to use the Solana network as a network. Even with Casper as well, I want to say that the exchanges and all these other things that are layered on top of Solana and the same goes for Casper coin are basically extorting the fees because these fees for Solana and Casper coin are very, very low. Even if the fee for exchanging Solana or Casper coin as in withdrawing or making deposits is $1. You can see that the exchanges are making a hefty amount in terms of the percentage on those fees for facilitating that transaction. So the fees at current time are good. Casper coins ones are very, very low. Solana ones are still low. I don't think that they're bad in any means. However, the gas prices obviously are going up because more people are using the Solana network. Casper right now doesn't have that network built on top of it. So it may be a while before we see this amount of transaction fees in terms of the 21 when compared to Casper coin. Now, when it comes to mining, obviously Solana isn't a mineable coin, but we'll go through it. Casper coin is built on K-heavy hash, very efficient for mining and processing transactions. The difference between GPUs and ASICs is very substantial when compared to Bitcoin mining with a GPU and an ASIC. So the reason that the ASICs are substantially better than GPUs is because of the memory hardening that is not on the network. Normally with things like Ethereum, you see memory hardening on the network, which makes it very hard to actually produce ASICs that are substantially more profitable than GPUs. So because it's a core intensive algorithm, there's not necessarily any memory hardening for the K-heavy hash algorithm. As it says here, it's already reached full progression to ASICs, which is very good. If you look at some of my videos previously or the Crypto Mining 101 series, you can see the progressions from CPU, GPU, FPGAs, and ASICs, a natural progression, which will happen to coins that allow it to further go on to ASIC mining. Here we have the emission schedule. So we can see if we scroll down, the emission schedule runs out in 2037, which is a very aggressive emission schedule. And I did post to X about this a couple of days ago, talking about how Casper coin will probably be one of the earliest coins that we see, which is proof of work, where the miners will actually have to gain profitability through the emission fees. So whenever this supply runs out, the only thing that's going to be coming off the network for miners is going to be the fees of the network. So because it's ending in around 14 years, we might actually see this in our lifetime. And it also might actually be a look into what Bitcoin would be in the future going forward when the mining runs out for that because we can see a model of it here. We can see how it plays out in terms of mining. And then we can see, you know, into the future, if Bitcoin is going to have the same pitfalls that happens to Casper coin, if it does happen. And then also it says that there's no strict block halving. So when we're talking about block halving, there's not a strict one. It's on a curve. However, overall, it does half by a net value. So we have 10 here on the 10th of the 7th. And then if we go to the 10th of the 6th here, you can see that it's 5. So 10 to 5 is basically a net halving over the year. However, obviously it decreases at an emission schedule rate. And then in terms of mining or kind of staking, I should have put that as the title. Solana is proof of stake, earned through staking, obviously. Now the rewards for staking Solana, I don't know how they're calculated. It is done on a bunch of algorithms but I'm talking about in the exchanges, how they're actually calculated because exchanges will offer a bunch of staking rewards. I've seen around five to 8% mostly. So I don't know how the exchanges are calculating that as I suppose most of the people staking Solana might just be doing it through exchanges with a total staked amount of 380 million. So if we click in here, look at the Solana scan, you can see here staked Sol 382 million. And I believe that the supply is only around 580 million. So a substantial amount staked into Solana, which in theory, you know, there's no real net gain if everyone stakes their Solana. If you have 50% of all Solana staked in, 
that means that 50% of the people are going to gain from the network and the other 50% aren't going to. However, if you have 100% of the coins staked into the network, you're just going to be making new coins and new coins all over again. This is one of the pitfalls, I believe, of Ethereum, is that if everyone has that basic gain, there's no net gain overall for everyone if everyone stakes their coins. So as a miner, obviously, I'm going to be biased to that, but that is one of the pitfalls of it. And I'm sure that people will come back and say that there is pitfalls of mining. And obviously there is, you know, electricity and stuff like that, the access to equipment. So when it comes down to market cap, right here, we have Casper at 2.2 billion, sitting at around 44. I believe this actually dropped. This does change a lot. However, Solana is sitting at 45 billion with a number five. If we click on this, we can actually see what the market cap was at the very top end of the bull run. Because Casper hasn't experienced the bull run, we don't actually know what the potential is. If you can see here, the top market cap was 75 billion, so around double of what it is right now. And that's a hefty amount. I believe that it was still at number five when it was at this market cap as well, because everything else was also going up as well. Now, I don't really focus on market cap. Obviously, the market cap does reflect the amount of people that have money in this coin. However, it's not really a metric that we would compare coins to because one coin could be substantially better with a lower market cap. It's just information that you guys can see. And then with the supply, Casper coin, we already saw with the emission schedule, it's around 28 billion. And with Solana, it's 570 billion. So on Solana here, you can see that there's a max supply of infinite. So in theory, it can go on forever, which obviously we don't really like that because we want to see a deflationary cycle going on because that's going to increase the price over time like we see with bitcoin and then with casper coin we've obviously seen the emission schedule which i believe is one of the reasons that casper coin's price is going up is because of this aggressive emission schedule because miners don't have a steady amount to mine necessarily every four years like in terms of bitcoin and it's reducing very quickly this means that also the price is going to go up very quickly the simple economics should show that. Obviously, there's going to be consolidating periods where miners don't sell and other things like that. And then in development, we have here Casper. Let's click into the development so we can see Dagnite, which is basically trying to protect the network after the Rust rewrite comes in. And then we have the mobile wallet development, integrated Casper for use on Ledger. These are all completed. The Rust coding language, which we talked about at the start. And then after that, we're going to have the upgrade consensus to follow Dagnite. So they've already written the paper. However, we need to see it implemented after the Rust update. And then a further increase to BPS and TPS in terms of the Rust update. So from 10 blocks per second up to 32, maybe even 100 in the future. Archival node improvements to scrub data from the first type of nodes that were ran on the network. And then obviously the one that everyone really wants to see after the Rust language update is the smart contract implementation. And then also we don't have any support for external builders. This is on the smart contract side. So there is a lot of development going on. Obviously the biggest one being that Rust update. The no external builders means that basically there's no ecosystem that you can build on because of no smart contract implementation. Now, when it comes over to Solana, obviously there's internal and external dev building. So people are building NFT platforms, stuff like that on top of Solana. However, the main pitfall that the Solana devs do need to fix that they should probably have in the development going on right now is fixing the network. So as we can see right here from the 9th of February, Solana outage caused by a previously identified bug, devs say. So this bug concluded and resulted in an infinite loop, which caused the validators to stall on a certain block. Infinite loop is a type of error that occurs when a condition or a terminal loop is never met, causing it to run all the time, basically. In context of the network, a bug within the validators' operations would lead them to being stuck in a continuous cycle of attempting to process the same block, thereby preventing the network from confirming more transactions. So Solana has had many outages, and it hasn't really been fixed necessarily because they keep coming up. Maybe once or twice a year, they'll pop up and then it'll be down for a couple of hours, which in theory shouldn't really be happening if you want something to be a currency. 
you should obviously have 24-7, 365 network coverage. Now, I personally think it's because they're a stake in coin and this leads to a lot of troubles in terms of the network just because of the amount of validators you have doesn't necessarily equal security on the network. But maybe I'm biased because I am a miner. So that's it for the video, Casper versus Solana. If you have any questions or any rebuttals to some of the points that I've mentioned in here, please leave them in the comments below and we can talk about them. Also, don't forget to like the video, subscribe for more content like this, check out some more Casper videos that are on the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.